welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Thank you, Scott Fletcher, and welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, your fortnightly podcast for all things guitar and gear. I'm Chris. With me tonight is Jesse. Hello. And uh, tonight we are going to try something different. We're going to do more of a freeform show. So as opposed to having a topic, a specific topic, Jesse and I are going to have a conversation about guitars. It's going to be like it. performance art. <laughs> yes, it's going to be like performance art. And so, listeners, we would love to get your feedback on this kind of format. Would you rather listen to us chat or listen to us chat about a particular subject? Please email us, six strings of things at jestercat.com or tweet us at SST Show. Let us know what you think. You can also leave comments below for those of you that are on YouTube. And don't forget to click that subscribe button. All right. So, Jesse, uh, what have you been doing this week guitar-wise? So, a couple things. One, um, tearing apart my old uh, my old number one guitar because it had oh. my favorite pickups in it that I uh, want to put in my new number one guitar. Uh, one of which I actually cu- had custom made for me. And then the other one was a uh, Duncan Stag Mag, uh, which is basically a humbucker made out of essentially two single coil pickups. Um, you know, go Google that; it's interesting. <laughs> and so that is kind of cool, yeah. Yeah, so I got these uh, Duncan um, triple shot pickup rings. You know that you can wire them all kinds of different ways. I, I don't know how many. It's exponential. It's a huge number of different combinations. And um, so I got them out of the old pickup or old guitar and put them in the rings. And But I haven't put them in the new guitar yet because I kind of want a whole day to do that and mess with it if anything is weird. And at the same time, I also got some uh, push-pull pots that I'm going to do like the uh, the Jimmy Page series, parallel, out of phase, blah, 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 all that um, wiring with my guitar. So you can also oh. Google Jimmy Page wiring. So that's what I did, uh, keeping myself away from practicing. <laughs> the actual practicing part. I'm kind of moving on from the whole cage thing um, and looking at like uh, seventh chord string sets. So like uh, in jazz, um, they kind of start you out with uh, sort of different versions of seventh chords. You know, so major seven, minor seven, dominant seven, and um, minor seven flat five and diminished. And you could do it on string set like five four three two, which is those strings, or six five four three, six three two one. You know what I mean? So there's all these. Imagine all the permutations of stuff. So I downloaded all the chord stuff, and I'm kind of going through the basic progressions and trying to get them back under my fingers. Cool. I say back under my fingers as if they were ever under my fingers to begin. <laughs> <laughs> but there you go. Yeah. I know. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been doing actually quite a bit guitar wise this week. So, uh, I'm working on a new song, awesome. um, cherry red wine, Luther Allison, uh, probably a bit above my playing ability, but it's like a aspirational kind of thing mm-hmm. and hacking away at it. Um, I, my instructor, uh, and I both agree that I think it's going to be really good for my technique with the technical aspect of my playing, because, it's like, you know, Luther Allison pretty much turns it up to 10 at the beginning of the song and just stays at 10 the entire time. It's, it's fast, lots of cool licks, lots mm-hmm. of just, you know, things like that. So, um, you know, working through that and honestly, I'm probably through the first six bars after working on the song for maybe two weeks, you know. Uh, so it's it's definitely taking me a while to uh, cut through that. Kind of put the um, improvisation turnaround stuff a little bit on the back burner. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to get back to that very soon. I got some new toys that's going to let me sort of uh, get into that. We can talk about those a little later if you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing that I did was uh, I put the strings on the SG that you gave me. So I, I'll do the sort of the cheap zoom in by holding the object up close to the camera. So the audience, <laughs> those who are watching the video can see. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Here's an SG. That's the back. That's beautiful. And I, don't, I don't know if you can see that the strings are blue. Uh, I don't know how well it's yep, going to come it comes through. Across. That's nice. comes across. Cool. So um, I don't know how I feel about these strings. Uh, so DR makes them and I, and I bet DR makes nice quality strings. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. The thing I don't know so much about is the blue coating. Yeah. Um, I, 
actually <laughs> part of cherry red wine requires a step and a half bend all the way up at the 17th fret on the high E string. And uh, some of that blue was coming off on my fingers. <laughs> now, that, that's, that's an insane bend, right? I mean, you basically are taking a high E string and probably bending up well past halfway across the fretboard, right? right. So I, I, if I had regular colored strings, there probably would be bits and flakes of metal in my fingers <laughs> after doing something crazy like that. Anyway, uh, but that's not what really bothers me. I find on the blue coating strings that um, – the pick slips a little slips. bit more. Uh huh. Yeah. So, you know, when you do a nice pick attack, you get that pluck, right? And I feel like my, it's hard to describe, but my pick is sliding across the string more than plucking the string. Okay. I, and that's the best way I can describe it. I felt like I had a couple of uh, poorly plucked strings, poorly mm-hmm. picked strings, I guess I should say. Um, while when I first put the um, strings on now, I haven't had too much of a problem. That I, I've kind of been digging in a little deeper, quote mm-hmm. unquote, you know, and, and have had a little less of a problem with that. Uh, I also don't know if it has something to do with me changing the setup on the guitar as well. Now, it wasn't a drastic change, but one of the things I noticed on this guitar, the last time I touched it was um, for a setup was November. And it's about a year ago. The, the neck is awfully straight. So I put a little bit of a, a bow in the neck, a downward bow in the neck. Uh, not much, about a, a little bit more than an eighth of a turn on the truss rod. Mm-hmm. And then I lowered the uh, pickups a little bit uh, because they were a little bit high. I also lowered the action a little bit because the action was a little bit high. And uh, no, I mean, I'm sorry, I take it back. I, wrote, I wrote, raised the action. The action was a little low. Uh, so I was tweaking it. Um, I, so I don't know, maybe that would have something to do with it, but, uh, it, it just felt like the pick was slipping over the strings more than with my other ones. That's not surprising. Well, first at the outset, I'd like to say, I'm so proud of you for making all these adjustments on your guitars and everything. I know. <laughs> Isn't it cool? Like, I was like, oh wow, I can do this, you know? Like, oh, hey, like, okay. A year ago, I would have been like, Jesse, I need to change my neck and please come over and turn the truss rod for me. That's my point. It's awesome. Uh, so yeah, I think, um, it could be. It, there's those strings. I, I didn't play those exact strings. Um, mm-hmm. I've played other coded. Now, now my favorite strings are coded, sort of, but it's a different sort of thing. Um, those elixirs. Um, yeah, I love those. Uh, yeah, I mean, they have the coding, but it's kind of between the windings. So you don't really feel it on the strings. I mean, you do a little bit, especially with the, the polywebs, ones that have kind of more goop on them. Right. Um, but they, they feel more like a regular string than... Um, than I think yours do. And the, and the what I'm going by is back in the 80s, Kramer had a guitar called a Carrera and everything was black. Had uh, ebony fretboard, black pickups, black, 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 no, no inlays, you know. And they came out with these black coated strings. So it all looked black except for the frets. And, um, and I got a set just because I thought, ooh, coated strings, maybe they'll last longer, blah, blah, blah. You know, my uh, quest to never change strings has been <laughs> since I started playing guitar. <laughs> so uh, – and what it did, it, I think it was probably pretty similar. I mean um, it, it would come off in my fingers. Like it would flake off where it touched the frets. So the thinner strings or the, the non-wound ones anyway, when you bent, wherever you bent – um, eventually, you got these like little wear marks right where the frets were. Uh huh. Yeah. Are you seeing any of that? Uh, not yet because I haven't had them on long enough. But okay. I have seen it where I feed the string in through the tailpiece. Uh-huh. On my SG, the string has a pretty steep angle to get up to the saddle. Right. And um, then it runs straight right across the the pickups and fretboard and everything. Mm -hmm. And when I was stringing it, especially the low strings, the E and the A, um, I was hearing the normal noise of dragging string through tailpiece that I hear on this guitar. No big deal. But as I looked at the string, there is definitely worn away blue. Like it's it's, you can see that metal color underneath. And I suspect that if I keep these strings on long enough, which I probably won't, um, I will see them wearing off around the frets. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, It's unfortunate that that, um, they can't come up with – but, you know, that's pretty brutal on a a string bending and whatever. 
Yeah, yeah, and I've seen um, some Ibanez um, guitars at a local guitar shop that has had the yellow, like the neon yellow strings, neon yellow guitar, neon yellow strings. That's a bold guitar right there. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. I think they have like every pen dot color. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Safety guitar. That's right. <laughs> in case you're playing in the fog. <laughs> yeah. But. Um, the sound of the strings really are fine. I think I, I do notice a little bit of a sound difference. But then again, this is the first time I've had the DR strings. I've only ever had um, the D'Addario or um, Elixirs mm-hmm. on the guitar. And so maybe there's a sound difference with the DR. I don't know. But there is definitely something going on with the sound. Uh, not a huge difference, but it's noticeable to me. If it's noticeable to me, then probably somebody like you will definitely pick up on it because you have better ears than I do. So is it is it muffled? Is that what you're yes. hearing? Okay. Yeah. Like a muted, kind of muffled sound a little bit. Um, but again, you know, like everything else with the guitars, it's so subjective as to what yeah. people like, mm-hmm. right? Um, so I could definitely see people really liking these strings, you know? Oh, and, and honestly, if somebody had really bright pickups and they wanted to tame it a little bit or something like mm-hmm. that, you know, maybe. Of course, it might be a different story as as they wear and as they, you know, in a month, will they what will they sound like then? That's... Yeah, that's a good question. And I don't think I'll have the strings on long enough to find out. I'm kind of thinking about taking them off. I will, though, leave them on until the next time you come over. Oh, thank you. you I'd like to play them. Yeah, I'd like to see if they're sort of like I remember those um, Kramer strings being. I don't remember who, obviously, Kramer didn't make guitar strings. I'm not sure who they contracted to do it. You know, one of the big ones, Ernie Ball or GHS or somebody. I think there's only like a couple different factories, right, that really – make yeah. strings from what I understand there's not too many different factories and then these different companies are just buying them off the same right. factories it's my understanding I could be wrong but it's my understanding yeah at least the wire I don't know maybe they wind them a certain way or put the balls on a certain way Elixir might just take manufactured strings and coat them or whatever they do yeah yeah that I so don't if, know. if anybody out there knows <laughs> yeah sure. let us know tweet us, us at know. SST show or send us an email leave us a comment um, and uh, tell us because that would help uh, help us, you know, bring you into part of this conversation. And even when we don't do these free form shows, we'd like to have you, our listeners as part of the conversation. Um, so fortunately, my SG is not my primary, uh, not even close to my primary. So I could park it to the side of the room for a while, not really worry about it, get to changing the strings whenever. If it mm-hmm. were my Paul, that would be a whole different story. My Paul or my <laughs> Strat, you know, I'd be like, oh, I got it. Well, actually, you know, uh, I put those cobalt strings. Our listeners might remember I was talking about the cobalt strings back in. July, I think it was. Right. On and the they were on my Paul. And boy, I got those off fast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they just, just, I didn't like them. And I didn't like the way they felt, didn't like the sound was different. There was just things that were different. I think, I think that they were actually lower on my guitar. I don't, it kind of sounds weird, but I think mm-hmm. there was that going on. And I put up with them for a week. I don't know. I, I think, I, I think again, I put up with them long enough for you to come over and play them. Mm hmm. And then it's like, okay, I'm I'm done. Uh, I just <laughs> not I, for you <laughs> with my Paul. I can't, you know, I just can't do that to my Les Paul. I, I I play that guitar almost every day. Yeah. And so if I have strings on that thing that I don't like, it's just it it grates on me. And hell, I mean, it was to the point where at night when I wasn't playing the guitar, I was sitting there watching TV with my wife or something. I was thinking about those damn strings on that guitar. Like, I gotta get those things off. <laughs> I couldn't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> they were like a fungus so, growing. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. But now, again, like, you know, I, I definitely see how people would like them, though. Yeah. You know, like, I, I definitely appreciate, you know, uh, that people are like, oh, those are really cool strings. I like them, so on and so forth. And they're still making them. They're still selling them. So, obviously, there are people out there that do like them. Oh, just yeah. not for me. Oh, definitely. There's so much taste from, you know, well, guitar, body, construction techniques, scale, length, everything. I mean, it's such a taste thing. Pickups. I mean, I'm kind of... I've uh, been hitting the uh, pickup forums, you know, lately to try to figure out is there another a combination that I could get that's, you know, exactly what I would want in this new hollow body because, you know, even the pickups that I put in my old number one, well, that, that was a solid body guitar. So, um, you know, but the problem is a lot of it, you just don't know until you get it. You yes. Know? Yeah. I you can go to YouTube and listen to video and somebody saying this is, you know, DeMarzio pickup and this is like the model number, brand number, whatever. And, and this is how it sounds. But, boy, they're playing through a certain amp that you Absolutely. might not have. They're playing through a guitar that you certainly don't have because it's not your, you know, guitar. Uh, um, and you're right. You Sometimes you just have to try them. And what's cool about guitar is that you can. 
It's true. Right. Strings I mean, especially are very easy, of yeah. course, to swap out. Yeah. Yeah, and, and even pickups, like uh, if you have some basic soldering skills, and I mean, and you know, my profession, I'm a, I'm a theoretical physicist. I have no <laughs> practical skills whatsoever, yet I can still solder a pair of pickup coils into my guitar with uh, very little trouble. So if you're out there and you're worried about doing something like that to a guitar, don't be. You know, you, you won't know until you can just sit down and do it and try it. That's true. And, and, you, and you can't really screw it up. Oh, I guess you can screw it up, but you know, if you if you're playing guitar, you probably have a friend who can probably help you out. That's true. Of course, you could always like do temporary stuff with like alligator clips. <laughs> you know, just that's a really good idea. There I was hadn't actually thought about that. Yeah. they uh, uh, who does the quick release? Some guitar company does a quick release. It might be EMG, and it's just like um, uh, it's like a PC like you know all the little connectors you get in uh, in PCs and stuff, and they have something like that for pickups. So it's, now, of course, you still have to depending on the guitar, take the strings off bridge, whatever, unscrew the pickup rings, that kind of thing. There was a guitar I remember from back, I think it was the late 80s, that had actually had a block in the middle that you could mount pickups on and then swap them out. Okay? So you push it in from the back, push a different block. I mean, it, it, it took like cool. a minute to swap out, you know, pickups. But I think it just never sold because, well, how many times are you going to do that? <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, but Fender's trying that again. Fender's got a new Strat. They have the SSS and the HSS configurations on these Strats. Mm-hmm. And there's a, basically a little card that you put into the back of the guitar. Right. And there's it's, 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 it's supposed to be almost like swapping out pickups. And they have different sounds. Uh-huh. It's all, I'm sure it's all DSP, right? Um, but they have different sounds you can put in. And, and uh, you buy the guitar. I think it comes with three of these cards. And uh, it's supposed to be like an easy way to change your sound. You can do it right there on stage. I mean, if you're playing on stage, you can just pop a card out, put a new card in, and off you go playing, um, which looks like it's a really cool toy. So this is funny. This all kind of happened this week. Uh, In my looking at uh, various wiring schemes and whatever, I came upon uh, guitarelectronics.com. I've ordered stuff from them before. I don't know if you've ever seen them. And they have stuff by this company, PMT, which is like Professional Musical Technology or something, Professional Music Technology. And they have a couple neat things like um, they have this little circuit that's like a treble bleed, adjustable treble bleed thing. You can just solder to the back of a, of a pot. Um, they, they sell a pot like, you know, with that already on it. Of course, these things are overpriced. It's like 15 bucks for this little you know, circuit. Sure, sure. But uh, um, but they also have a pot that has, it's like a push-pull thing and this is what interests me, except it's 30 bucks, so I probably won't buy one. <laughs> <laughs> but so what it does is you connect uh, both your pickups to it and if you push it in, it will roll off one coil of a humbucker so you only have the other coil. If you pull it up, it does the other coil. So you can, it's like a spin-a-split. You know, you can go anywhere from full humbucker on a pickup to one or the other coil or anywhere in between. It's all variable because now, go, go. now I have a question. Sorry to interrupt you, but I have a question while we're on that for a humbucker. Would the coils make different sounds like individual coils by themselves? Yeah. Like I, I, I like, I understand like the coil tapping idea of going from a humbucker to a single, you're going to hear a difference. I've got my three thirty nine has that. Right. 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 But now let's say you think of a humbucker stacked right you're looking at it there's a top coil and a bottom coil so you're going to get different sounds out of those two coils by themselves well not top and bottom so so much but in a humbucker you have side by side right i mean that's what we're, uh-huh. that's what we're talking about i mean a regular right, humbucker right. not like a stack um yes and no it depends so if you're um if you're at the neck and your humbucker has the same exact design in both coils like a traditional PAF or most Duncans or whatever, right. um, then it sounds really close because along the string length, the difference is not much. Right. It, right. Depending on where you fret, there's a little bit of a difference, but it, it's not a big deal. At the bridge, though, you have one coil that's really close to the end of the string and another one that was that is – like fractionally speaking, like twice as far away from the end of the string. And so it's actually a, a substantial amount more um, output. Huh. So, yeah, if you split a bridge uh, pickup, you get a much thinner, um, brighter sound if you go to the one closer to the bridge, which is why most guitars use the other coil, one that's closer to the neck when they split. Um, now, there are pickups that have asymmetrical winds. Uh, DeMarzio had a patent on this thing first. So a lot of their pickups, Steve Special, Mega Drive, I can't remember all of them, but they have where the pickups are not the same or the coils are not the same. 
And the way that what that does is it um, they have different resonances, so you get kind of a wider range sound instead of having that real one mid range sort of hump or resonance. It has mm-hmm. different ones, and so it's a different sound, you know, not quite as mid rangey and thick. Um, if you split to one coil or another, it's different. And one of the I have a Steve special, and, and the coils are really freaking different. <laughs> I mean, you can look at it, and one's like packed with wire, and the other one's almost not really even there. And, Interesting. Um, yeah, so when you split to the big one, it's a really nice, thick, full. It's almost right. a full Strat single coil sound. The other one's just useless for that. So yeah, yeah it depends, depends on the pickup. Yeah, I had never heard of this. So it makes me wonder now, like when I do a coil tapping on my 339, exactly which single coil am I playing through? Hmm. That Probably the inside one. Okay. One thing is... With the way most um, dual humbucker guitars are set up, um, the outer coils and or the inner coils are reverse wound, reverse polarity from each other. So they'll remain humbucking. Okay, so you're going to want to do it that way. Um, Paul Reed Smith has done this since the beginning. I think they have they actually with their five position rotary switch allow you to choose outer pickups. Uh, or outer coils, rather, or inner coils to get a little different sound. Sort of the outer ones they claim is more sort of telly-like, and the inner ones is more strat-like because they're a little closer, so they give a little bit of that quack. Not nearly like a strat, but, you know. Right. Um, newer circuits, since a few years ago, have uh, – they actually, when they split a pickup, they leave a little bit of the other coil in the circuit to give a little more oomph. Okay. Than it would otherwise be. And it's also a little bit of humbuck. It's it gets rid of a little hum. Sure, sure. I'm gonna have to look up some of this stuff because I didn't realize there was five way switches for dual humbucking guitars and yeah. things like that. I, this is something that's totally new to me. I'm gonna have to check into this because that sounds very interesting. And probably if my wife is listening to this, she's probably going, Oh crap. <laughs> there goes the weekend. <laughs> there goes the weekend. It's like I guess I know what Chris is gonna be asking for next uh for Christmas. I'm like very specific dual bug humbucking guitar. Well, uh, we, hey, you know, just go we'll just go get a five position rotary switch and go to town. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um or we just buy the new guitar and not have to worry about switching the switches out. There's always that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so actually where I was going <laughs> sorry with sorry. this uh, PMT was they had like well, there's actually a legal battle I think going on between them and uh Ernie Ball a music man. Um because they have this electronic mujamehiki <laughs> that uh, allows you to program basically you put all of your sing- your coils even if you have like a you know two humbucker and single coil guitar, you know, set up one of these Ibanez rigs, um, you can put every coil, you know, solder it to this one thing and then configure it like any way you want and then have presets. So, you know, if you want outer coils plus, you know, an outer phase middle pickup, fine. If you want inner coils plus, you know, whatever you want. Um, of course, it's like a few hundred dollars for this electronic thing. Right, right, right. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know if anybody's going to do that. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's it's very interesting. Um, it's really yeah. a never-ending thing. And the problem is, in the end, every guitar, you should have like three good noises. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's yes. just finding the three, you know? <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um Cool. Well, no, that was uh, that was definitely informative. I, like I said, totally unaware. I've definitely got to go into this. Of course, I, I think before I were to ever even get a guitar like that, I really have to look at these tube amps. Like I have to. Uh, <laughs> that's, right. that's that's really the next uh, purchase. Uh, it's got to be the next purchase. Yeah. So my, currently, my breakfast cereal, um, you know, catalog um, ogling has been uh, one of the PV classics or one of the, one of the Black Stars. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. looking at something like that. Yeah. Well, you know, the there's, there's shop here in town has uh, a bunch of black stars in it. We need to play. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we do. We just need to make a trip to a big guitar store and uh, just, you know, play through amps. Mm-hmm. That's what has to happen. So, well, um, let's see. You know, you know, for a free form show, I think we did pretty well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Listeners, uh, please let us know what you think. Uh, I think we're at basically pretty close to the half hour mark. Wow. Uh, Time yeah. flies. Yeah. Or if we're not, uh, I don't know when we started. So our <laughs> listeners are probably looking at the timestamp saying, 
Chris, what the hell is Chris talking about? They're not close to a half hour. I, I didn't look at the <laughs> time we started. You know, my recording stuff doesn't tell me uh, how much time. I don't think. That's terrible. Well, listeners, let us know how we did. All right? This is a new sh- uh, format for us, and we wanted to give it a shot and have it the show organically grow as we um, – sort of recorded so please contact us uh as uh, six strings of things sorry at jestercat.com or tweet us at sst show and just say hey you guys did great or hey you guys suck but <laughs> don't say that because i don't hurt our feelings be constructive <laughs> with your criticism so anyway <laughs> all right so i think that will be all for this evening um and just remember everybody keep picking and grinning Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this and all other Jester Cat shows at JesterCat.com. You can also email the show at SST at JesterCat.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can follow Robert at RS Macy, Jesse at Jester 700, and Chris at CW Culp. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music. 